Emotions let me know that all things gotta change. Time lets me know that all things go. Never understood the way some people see another. The talent I grew up in when I was a boy is vastly different to the talent that it is today. It is unique. It has a, it has a town centre. It has uh, three large hotels. It has, uh, on its outskirts, you have Bornabrina, you have the lakes, which is a scenic route. And from those lakes, you can see, you can see, oversee the whole of Dublin. You have walks, and the South Dublin County Council, our local authority, have now built a new walkway. Tanna is actually steeped in history. We've had, uh, as, you, as we're standing here, Catherine Tynan's monument. Now, Catherine Tynan was our national poet who comes from just down the Belgard Road, and our house is still standing today, which we're, we, we've been trying to save. It's in the ownership of the Yardish Rugby uh, Club. We, we tried to save that. The first commercial usage of a private house in the village was a Fianna Fáil um, office or meeting room. Since then, of course, nearly every house in the village has been taken over for business. There are one or two local families still living there, but they are they're, they're very few. I think there's only about three left living in the village itself. The Blessington steam tram ran right outside their door, and that's another day's work. Uh, Blessington steam tram came from town and went to Blessington. And that was the only means of transport within to the city. Tallaght Community Council have been running the Tallaght Person of the Year Awards for 28 years. We had a very successful Person of the Year last year, Jimmy Wynn, who, who was a, a Trojan worker, not only for his community, but for Tallaght Tala Community Council. When I got the Tallaght Person of the Year, I accepted the award on behalf of all volunteers, only for volunteers where would this country be, where would Tallaght be? It would be a lot worse probably than it is, but it is a good place to live. The person that I have spoken to a couple of times was uh, Bridie, Bridie Sweeney. She was involved in a lot of uh, with the senior citizens. Twice winning it, is a, a big, win, winning it once is a big honour, but to win it twice is really something special. And uh, she does tremendous work, her, her and her, same as everybody else. She has a lot of volunteers around her. Well, it's your service over so many years to the community. And 30, 33, 34 years at Hallock Community School, uh, involved in the environment, involved in the, the young people as we moved into the estate, bringing them up and uh, helping them through their own lives like as well, you know, and um, good communication with them and uh, receive great respect from the young people, which is something you can't really buy, you know. There's very good people in Tala. Um, young people. We have young people now at the moment in, the, in Tala Community School doing work experience. And they're in around the church now and they're cleaning up their cutting grass and things like that. These are the young people that should be recognised for what they're doing. Not this business of um, people being the odd one here and there, you know, not behaving but probably. We have a lot of good young people around the area. And they need to be noticed. I've been involved in football all my life. And I felt that putting something back into, into the community after playing football myself for John Bosco for so many years, the top level of school by football, I thought to pass on my knowledge after people giving their time to me, I've done the same for them and spent a lot of time with the young people. Also in the area that I was involved with, uh, with Timeville Football Club, I started off that in the area about um, roughly 15 years ago and I spent seven years there and then passed it on to another group of people which changed the name over to Time and Celtic. At the moment now they're in intermediate football and they're doing very, very well and they're in for promotion again for the second year running. So uh, something is achieved in our own area for, for that. The Echo was first published on the 1st of May 1980. Uh, it evolved because I attended, along with my brother-in-law, a community development weekend in Priory here in Tala in 1979, November 79. 
And at that time, we had, prior to that, we had a magazine here called Tala Magazine, which was run by Eddie Brennan. And Eddie, had, they'd ceased publication of that magazine about a year before that. And I felt it was a tremendous loss to the area, not having a, a vehicle to communicate. It was a, a huge evolving area that needed to know what was happening around it. So that's her, where the seed was sown. And we then, then and, and the 1st of May of 1980, we were planning uh, its, its, uh, its launch. Essentially, it is a community. It was set up in, as a community newspaper, in a, in a, sen in a sense. Uh, but it had to report. It had to do all the, the good and the bad. And uh, it, it is, its orientation is towards the development of the community. Now, alongside that, we would have done various features on, certain, on areas within the community. Uh, we have a regular uh, historic piece that's there, uh, the history of the area. That, that, that can happen every so often. We'll do a 10, 12-week series on history in the area. There's one running at the moment. Um, and then we have other events that we, we, we communicate with, say, the schools. We have School Around the Corner, which is for the smaller kids, and we interview them, and they give their views or whatever. We would have always seen ourselves as a nursery, more than anything else, where people came and they cut their teeth. In the echo, we got maybe one, two years from them and stuff like that. But then in, ter in time, we began to make to try and hold on to our journals because they were a valuable source. They got valuable information, valuable contacts, and we tried to hang on to them. But in the past, as uh, I say, some would have seen it as a stepping stone to other places. And indeed, some of the national newspapers would have kept an eye on us for any journalists that were coming up. And if they had a spot, you know, suddenly they were gone, you know. But uh, I suppose the most, most significant one at the moment is John Murray on... Uh, RTE, John Murray Show in the morning time. He's from Tala himself and he started his career here with us. Well, Tala obviously is a city now. It's a, a major, uh, major uh, urban area and along with that came tremendous developments. Um, notable one for ourselves was the, the start when the council offices came to Tala because that was, would have been a significant place for us to do our business. In other words, that the council uh, had council meetings, uh, all the events that, that the council were involved in, etc. So it was a great source for us. So it was probably the biggest uh, single development that affected the echo at the time. Uh, the coming of the IT to Tala was a big event, a huge event. And uh, also then, of course, the square, the opening of the square, all those major developments that you'd see in any, any city of its size.